Well, get ready for $12 per gallon gas. That's what a chair of a major gas company said on Tuesday at the Energy Intelligence Forum in London. And following that prediction, OPEC went and cut gas supply to the world, planet Earth, uh, by 2%. This is Sharif Suki from Tellurian. He's tell, Tellurian. I'm, I'm sorry, I I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, he said getting U.S. gas in the water for 4 to $5 is something of the past. What he means in the water is like on shipping containers. Uh, so, you know, getting these 4 to $5 a gallon prices, something on the past. If you really want to justify an investment, you have to start thinking of 10 to $12. That is a price that you would charge consumers. Uh, of course, we all knew that OPEC was going to cut gas supply because they've been hinting about it for the past week. And they had a meeting today in Vienna and they did just that. Uh, they did it because profits have been down for gas companies because demand is down. Um, it's this spiral of sort of domino effects. So global politics have brought on gas price hikes. Gas price hikes caused a drop in demand. And now gas producers are upset that that drop in demand has cut into their profits. So they're manipulating supply to ensure their profits. Now, when you think of this instance of like all the players involved, there's politicians, there's consumers, there's oil producers. The politicians absolutely are, are playing their part, right? Because they are, because of their politics, it's causing a drop in demand and a drop in availability, right? The oil producers, they have a role in it. They can do something. They can manipulate price and supply. The consumers here, we basically can do nothing but bend over. So here is this question in this instance, who loses when gas supply goes up and goes down and prices go up? Is it A, politicians, B, consumers, C, oil producers, or D, Russia? Now the media would have you believe the answer is D, right? Like we're really sticking it to Russia. Uh, the real answer, folks, is B, you, oh, us. Oh, consumers. Okay. Consumers. I was thrown off. Who's I, I losing? Was, it's a negative question. I was thrown right? off by the question. I, I read it like five times. Okay. And if you're in the chat wondering, did are you going crazy? No, you're not. There's it's a, like an there's SAT a, question. There's a word missing. So okay. yes. Who loses when gas supply goes does and prices go up? Okay. Yeah. So when when prices goes does. Sorry, that was that was a typo. Okay. But I was like, I was like, am I am I losing my mind? You know what? Uh, tonight I have my glasses on. So when I did my screens later, sorry about that. Thank you for <laughs> pointing that out. That's like when you mistype a tweet and you're like, boy, I feel really stupid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the answer is B. It B. is consumers. So when gas, okay, I'll just read it. So pretend like it's fixed. Okay. Who loses? <laughs> who loses when gas supply goes down and prices go up? Consumers lose. Consumers. Okay. It's you. Okay. Not surprising. You know, my father, he has a, a landscaping company with about a hundred employees and they drive trucks around all the time, all day to routes and I just don't know what he's going to do. He has to keep making more and more cuts I mean, California because of prices. gas prices. And he's in California. He's in California. Um, so let's talk about specifically what OPEC did and then what the media is screaming about. Um, now, OPEC says they are going to cut 2 million barrels per day from global supply. Hold on a second. Let's just be, put that in perspective. The prediction was 300,000 barrels per day. Now, when we covered this a few would weeks ago- Would be cut. Would be cut. When we covered this a few weeks ago here in Zero Hedges reporting on this, 300,000 was going to be a real uh, kick in the nuts, okay? Two million now is the number instead of 300,000. Yes, they are calling this a voluntary adjustment. Um, and these countries all agreed to it. Now, OPEC is a group of oil exporting countries. Um, it's kind of like, you know, the original it was developed in 1960. And then OPEC Plus is kind of like junior varsity team. They are all oil exporters, but they came along later and they all had to vote. Now, the mainstream media is focusing on only one of these member countries to blame this on. So the original OPEC countries were Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela, and then added later Algeria, Angola, Congo, um, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Libya, Nigeria, and the UAE. And then 
Later in OPEC Plus was added an extra 10 Azerbaijan, uh, Bahrain, Brunei, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Mexico, Oman, Russia, South Sudan, and Sudan. So again, of all of these countries that had to agree to this, Mm -hmm. right, the mainstream media will tell you it's Russia. This is just like one export of the news that was served to me today um, about how it's really Russia. It's OPEC aligning with Russia. It's Russia's fault, even though they are only one amongst many oil exporters. Well, the plus, so it's OPEC plus. And every news article that I said uh, read was OPEC plus. The plus stands for Russia. That's what they were saying. Like, that's the Western media spin on this. The plus stands for Russia. Okay, so let's let's just parse out the numbers a little bit. Okay, because on the OPEC website, uh, it gives you this chart of what these uh, what do we call them? Voluntary what did I just say? Uh, Voluntary adjustments are, right? Um, Are we able to zoom in on that? Because if you see who are the biggest exporters of this, I'm sorry, okay. Um, Who are the biggest exporters on this list are in fact Saudi Arabia and Russia. Um, And so they are giving voluntary adjustments, meaning reducing their amount by 526 each one. So it does look like the main drivers of this are Saudi Arabia and Russia. Uh, but I decided to take this chart and then just put it in a spreadsheet of my own to parse out the percentages. So I did that, and you notice that they all are ranging from about 4 to 5%. Every country's voluntary adjustment is about the same percentage of what they are producing right now and what they were expected, their project- projection. And then if you just do a data sort uh, by percentage, you can see that Russia is not even pulling back the highest percentage of oil. So it's pretty easy to see if you just have a sort of basic understanding of numbers and know how to run a spreadsheet. So why is the West so pissed about this? It's because it will make them, it will make it harder for them to sanction and stop using Russian oil if there are fewer places that will sell them oil alternatively. Uh, this And so the Saudi energy minister, Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman al Saud called out this media bias when he was asked about this today. He says, You know, every time I talk to you, you turn this into a Russian story, and I'm tired of this, so I'm respectfully just not going to talk to you. This is him speaking to a Reuters reporter. Listen. This is great. Alex Lawler from Reuters News Agency. Um, I had two questions. The so, first is- but no, 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 Alex, I have to talk to you about. So you have got it wrong. Okay. <laughs> and you have got it wrong twice. Before I ask a question, I'll and you will get it three, the third time if you, you know, you did uh, as writer did not do a proper job. You talked about Russia doing this and that, and actually the day that your story came out, no one from Russia talked to me, nor I talked to anybody from Russia. Oh wow! You repeated that again with another tale of a story prior to that, that Saudi and Russia, blah blah blah, are congregating around a hundred dollar price <laughs> that is not true we and i spent 20 minutes from one of your respected mem- uh, members of uh, your peer in dubai explaining to her or actually 25 minutes why we don't go as saudi Arabia for price targeting and that 25 minutes went in vain and i really don't like that i acted in a very respectful way emanating from respecting the agency and I think but you elected you elected to choose a phantom Saudi source a phantom Saudi source 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 as British as I could (laughs) but I'll keep keep, my friends is Reuters for you yeah yeah keep keep playing the rest of that I'm sorry I was I was just jumping in because he was like yeah you, you just you just cited a phantom source even though you spoke to me and I told you we we didn't even talk to Russia we don't price target we have no there's no connection with Russia on these price targets you're you just went around my back and you made up a story and he's calling them out right in front of this room and you've screwed up twice now I'm not going to answer your questions in front of these people anyway keep playing it but if you have question directed to others but not me I'm not talking to Reuters until you respect the source, which is the energy minister on behalf of the Saudi government. Okay, thank you. I won't ask so you ask the questions to any of my <laughs> colleagues. Okay, so he's saying, look, 
I'm the guy. If you are actually going to quote me, then don't say that I collude with Russia. Don't say that I'm talking to Russia. That's not happening. And I already told you this. So burn, right? <laughs> uh, no thanks to the Reuters reporter for this, uh, you know, outlet pulling, pushing this narrative of Russia over and over again. Now, CNN reports that President Biden was all but begging OPEC not to do this, not to decreased supply. Uh, they describe the administration as having a spasm and panicking. Uh, look at this article. It says, um, it's important that everyone is aware of just how high the stakes are, said this U.S. official. Uh, the White House is having a spasm and panicking, said another official, describing the latest administration effort as taking the gloves off. According to a White House official, the talking points were being drafted and exchanged by staffers and have not been approved by White House leaders or used with foreign partners. So what they're going to say in response to this, they're still drafting it furiously. I'm sure it will have something to do with like sham and Putin. Putin's price hike. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, all of that. Um, in a statement C to CNN, National Security Council uh, spokesperson Adrian Watson said, we've been clear that energy supply should meet demand to support economic growth and lower prices for consumers around the world. And we will continue to talk to our partners about that. Uh, what exactly they can do at this point is unclear. They said, we're going to see about it. Um, you know, again, it would be interesting if this led to more sanctions, because that is their like, strong arm talking point like the right. sanctions got us here and so we're gonna have to sanction right? right um recall that president biden went to saudi arabia to convince them to increase production this summer even though he said he would never do that he would never actually meet with um saudi arabia or maybe a pariah he was going to treat them like a pariah well now he's getting the opposite of what he went there and asked for. And the White House is having to scramble to pretend that this did not happen, this was not his fault. And in fact, uh, President Biden was really not that interested in oil when he went to Saudi Arabia. Uh, listen to how the White House wants to have it both ways. Uh, Peter Ducey pushed them on this. You've said the president was responsible for gas prices coming down. Is the president responsible for gas prices going up? So it's a lot more nuance than that, right? Oh, we like Here, nuance you know, now. Okay. Uh, there have been global challenges that we have all have d d dealt with. When I say all, meaning other countries as well have dealt with since the pandemic. There's been pandemic and there's been uh, Putin's war. And Putin's war uh, has... Uh, increase gas prices at the pump. We have seen that over the past several months. And what the president was able to do, uh, he took some historic steps when you think about the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and making sure that he, we were able to do everything that we can to bring that cost down uh, for American families, give them a little bit more of a breathing room. And we saw that. We saw that mm -hmm. every day this summer uh, over a, uh, saving American families over a dollar per gallon. And so that is what the president is going to continue to, to stay focused on, our cons American consumers. How do we continue uh, to, keep, uh, to keep prices down? That's why we, we did the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. That's why we talk about the CHIPS Act. All of these things are going to help Americans here in this country. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act added taxation on foreign gas. So and, and the, the chip, strategic and the chip. reserves are the ones they were selling to China. Yeah. yeah so and the CHIPS Act. I mean... So, so what do Invi chips have to do with so gas? Nvidia? So Nvidia can you know get lower cost chips, and Nancy Pelosi can make money with her investments. What the hell does ch you know chips have to do with the price of gasoline? Uh, I don't know. And when Peter Ducey then asks about this trip to the Middle East, like, well, that was a bust, right? Um, and she goes out. She straight up admits it and says, "Yeah, that was too bad." No, I'm just kidding. She does the exact like, opposite. What? Go ahead. <laughs> Um, when the president went to Saudi Arabia, he said, I'm doing all I can to increase the supply for the United States of America, which I expect to happen. What happened? So let's, I want to be very clear, um, and we have said that, you know, his trip to, trip to the Middle East uh, was not 
about oil. It was about America's <laughs> position in the Middle East and co consultation with 12 leaders from across the region on a range of issues similar to his summits in Asia uh, or the Americas, and later this year with African leaders. The president's trip was crucial. It was critical uh, to U.S. national security, a more peaceful, integrated region, and for global security. And there were plenty of examples that we laid out to all of you as of why this trip was so important. Yeah, yeah, it had nothing to do Thank with oil. Thank you so much for clearing that up. <laughs> oh, well, they wanted to be friends, but now they absolutely do not. They right. do not want to be friends because they are taking this very personally, specifically from Russia and Saudi Arabia. Biden told us specifically then, like when he got back, why he went there. And he specifically laid out, I don't know if we have the soundbite or not, but he specifically laid out, I went there I because I was negotiating gas prices, you know, make, making sure that everything was shored up. And, and take a listen. This is how he said it after he went. Listen. We had a good, we had a good d d discussion on ensuring global energy security and adequate oil supplies to support global economic growth. And that will begin shortly. Okay. So Corinne then is, ba is lying right to those reporters. Like, no, no, the president himself said that he went there to talk about this, and it was about structuring oil, uh, making sure that oil would flow to the United States. Right, and so if we play out her narrative, oh, so you went to be friends, but now you don't want to be friends because you're we're pissed at them, right? Right. So that's how your you guys, friendships you guys, go. Let me make this crystal clear, okay? That let is not what happened. Crystal clear. All right, clear. let me make are this listening? crystal clear for you guys because you, you don't seem to get it. Are you are you listening? <laughs> okay. Are you are you listening? I'll make this, I'm going to make this crystal clear. Are you listening? I am listening. When he leans into the microphone and he Guys, are you listening? I'm really going to get him. I'm going to get their attention. Where's Jackie? I did that. Jackie here. Where's Jackie? All right. Sorry. Well, let me make this crystal clear, is that the price of crude oil did rise on this news. Uh, it had been over $120 a barrel earlier in the year and then had been plummeting to $75 per barrel in September. And now you can see that there is an upward trajectory since speculation began that production would be cut. You see the sort of bottom of this chart hits right on speculation that OPEC will indeed decrease supply. Now, the company line from the West is that this will harm relationships between the East and the West because the Eastern countries that make up OPEC will not let the West play out its sanctions the way it wants to. This is from the Financial Times. The US has considered a range of measures, it says, to respond. A range of measures, right? We don't know what that's going to be um, if OPEC succeeds in driving oil prices higher, including restrictions on fuel exports from the US. Not gonna get our gas if you guys do this. Not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work here anymore. Uh, according to these people, now analysts said Saudi Arabia's decision to proceed with the cuts that would prop up oil prices and damaged Western governments' efforts to curb Russian oil income used to sustain its war in Ukraine marked a significant moment in Riyadh's 75-year-long energy alliance with the U.S. K. Right. So they are not going along with the rush, the Western effort to sanction Russia. And that hurts our feelings because we had a plan, guys. <laughs> and that plan doesn't work. Right. If you pull back our options to not use Russian oil. Uh, this quote here from uh, Bill Farron Price, a veteran OPEC watcher, which is an interesting what title. do you do? What do you do for a living? I watch OPEC all day. Like, I'm an OPEC watcher. When I'm not outside birding, I'm watching OPEC. See right. what these guys are doing. Okay. Oh, look, there's a there's a red breasted titterol. I don't know what that is. What the hell? Okay, uh, <laughs> I want to get back to this OPEC watchers quote. He says Saudi Arabia has set OPEC on a collision course with the free world. They have sided with Russia in the name of protective oil market management. Just as consumers across the world are battling inflation and the rising cost of living, uh, there are bound to be political consequences for Riyadh. Like you really did us wrong, Riyadh, and we will remember this that you did not want to harm your own country by going along with our plan to harm other people's countries. And we're going to remember this. And we're going to, and uh, we're, we're going to remember this when, when you want us to send you more weapons. Yeah. One because day you're going to turn around 
you're going to want this guy and I'm not going to be here because you hurt my feelings. You know all those weapons we send you? Right out? in front of the midterm election. You guys listening? You guys listening? I'm going to remember this. I'm going to send you those weapons. You guys, you guys remember that? Hey, and just FYI, uh, there's no titter roll, but there's a titter. And a titter is a half suppressed laugh or giggle. Her mm -hmm. stutter caused the children to titter. So titter roll, I would assume probably means a little bit more of a giggle. I see, I see. I saw, I liked someone in the chat said they were out there looking for the OPECers. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. That's a good one. I like, like that. that. I like it. <laughs> yeah. All, right. All right. Well, well um, you know, that's what's happening. And you know how that's going to hit the rest of us uh, hard in the, in the OPECers. In the OPECers. Uh, let us know what your gas price is. We're going to watch this because I, I really am scared about where this is. Certainly how this is going to affect small business um, and just average average people around the world. Again, those are the people, the consumers that will get screwed in all of this. You know, I know we're laughing here at the end, laughing at this hypocrisy of these people. But at the end of the day, this is a direct relationship to people being screwed by these globalists. Um, and this is what we need to throw these people out, these bums out. You know, by watching yeah. this show, by sharing this show, by having this awareness, calling up your re representatives, telling them, demanding change. Um, we're, we're seeing this. We're seeing this change happening in countries. We're seeing it happening in Brazil. We're seeing people rising up and saying enough is enough. We're seeing it in Italy. We're seeing it in other places. So we can affect change. Um, and I want you to all feel empowered by that because it's happening. We can make a we can make a difference when we all get together and push these globalists out of the way. I was just thinking about like community taxes, your local city tax or your state tax. How much more we will pay if there is an increase in get because how are you going to run the school buses right how are you going to run police force how are you going to you know there absolutely is not enough electric vehicles right. on any of those fleets nor will there be um and i don't know how some of these local communities can continue to go at twelve dollars a gallon no twelve dollars a gallon i mean people are suffering now at five dollars a gallon how are you going to do this it's unbelievable I mean, and they don't care my my daughter my daughter's school it's about a 20 minute drive so it's a 40 minute round trip to get her to school so if it hits 12 dollars a gal gallon i'm better off just pulling her out and homeschooling her wow, like, wow. yeah seriously like that's crazy that is crazy yeah. yeah you're gonna see a lot of people doing that our kids take the bus and i was thinking like the bus is not gonna be able to keep running if yeah. it, you know at this kind of loss they'll have to increase our you know either i, I don't know I like, like they're the gonna guy, have to pass I feel like I'm on. on airplane the movie like oh i picked the wrong week or the wrong month to start overlanding <laughs> i picked <laughs> the, the wrong, wrong month to start over i picked the wrong month to stop sniffing glue